All right, welcome everyone uh, to this deep dive. And we're getting pretty down and dirty today. Down and dirty, literally. Yeah, literally we are tackling the topic of trash. All things garbage. All things garbage, waste, rubbish, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And we're going to follow it yeah. along its journey from you know, the moment you toss something in the bin yeah. to uh, you know that final resting place. Right. And I got to say, the stuff we found digging through these sources is oh, yeah. really eye-opening. We're talking about mountains of garbage folks mountains a truly global problem and we're talking serious numbers here we are a two billion metric tons of waste every year that's what we're dealing with globally yeah that's 0.74 kilograms of waste per person per day per person that's crazy and Wait. we're not just talking about you know those harmless banana peels or that yeah. stack of junk mail right these sources take us into the heart of it all uh the processing plants the mysterious recycling centers yeah and even those you've seen them in documentaries those sprawling landfills that look like they're oh yeah from some dystopian future huge huge those that make you wonder like where does it all go it's easy to forget about our trash once it leaves our curb out of sight out of mind yeah but there's a whole hidden world of waste management and i think it reveals a lot about global inequality oh absolutely and that's actually our first stock on this trash journey is a waste processing plant Okay. So picture this, mm -hmm. a giant conveyor belt piled high with, well, everything you could possibly think of. Oh, I can imagine. Right. And amidst all that chaos, you have these incredible workers. And we talk about unsung heroes. Yeah. Meticulously sorting through it all. They're pulling out recyclables, carefully separating hazardous materials. It's a tough job. Tough job. One worker in our sources described it as exhausting work, mm -hmm. but they also talked about that sense of purpose. Right they get from knowing they're keeping all that waste out of the landfills. Yeah, it's really interesting how that source highlights the value of something that we consider like a mundane task. Right. But I think this source also provides a stark contrast when it comes to waste management in developing countries. Yeah. Where those resources and that infrastructure are often lacking. It's a completely different reality. In fact, the source mentions that in some places, yeah. these workers face pretty dangerous conditions. Oh yeah. You know handling hazardous materials without the proper protection, they're really putting their health on the line every day. Yeah, and that really highlights the global disparities we see. Huge disparities. In waste management, in some parts of the world, it's this highly organized system right. with strict regulations, and in others, it's, as you said, completely different. Yeah, it's a chaotic necessity. Yeah, and this often invisible labor force, I think they play a critical role in protecting both public health Absolutely. and the environment. And their experiences, I think, are essential to understanding the true cost of all our waste. It's a powerful reminder that even something as simple as taking out the trash isn't so simple after all. Not at all. It's tied to complex social and economic factors that vary dramatically around the world. For sure. And that brings us to everyone's, you know, favorite feel-good solution. Oh, yeah. Recycling. Yeah. That, you know, satisfying feeling of tossing a plastic bottle into that blue bin thinking, huh. Eh, I'm doing my part. Makes you feel good. It does, it does. But the sources we dug into paint, well... A little bit more complicated picture. Yeah, a little bit more complicated. So let's take a virtual trip to a recycling center. <laughs> let's go. Right, set the scene for us. So imagine this, a massive warehouse bustling with activity, workers sorting through these huge mounds of material plastics, metals, glass. Wow. Just a whirlwind of motion and skip loaders zipping around, moving pallets of these sorted materials. Sounds pretty impressive. Uh. But here's where things get a little... A little messy. Yeah, a little messy. One of our sources reveals a rather shocking statistic. Only about 9% of all plastic ever produced has actually been recycled. We 9%, that's that's just depressing. I mean, all that effort for such a small percentage? It is low. There's got to be a reason for that. Well, there are actually a few reasons. One major challenge is this issue of mixed plastics. Mixed plastics. Yeah, not all plastics are created equal, yeah. and some are much harder to recycle than others. So all of those yogurt containers, I've been so carefully rinsing out right thinking oh you know second life they might have just ended up in a landfill anyway it's definitely possible you see when different types of plastics are mixed okay. it can actually contaminate the recycling stream uh -huh. making the process more difficult and expensive so it's actually doing more harm than good. Yeah, and then there's also this problem of downcycling. Downcycling, what's that? So unlike, you know, glass or aluminum, which can be recycled 
basically indefinitely without losing quality plastic degrades each time it's recycled. Uh -oh. So, you know, that plastic bottle might be downcycled into a park bench or a fleece jacket. Okay. But eventually it will reach a point where it can't be recycled anymore Brown. and it ends up in a landfill. So even if I'm super diligent about my recycling, it's not a perfect solution. Yeah, not all. We've also got the issue of infrastructure, right? Yes, many parts of the world just simply lack the facilities to properly process and recycle certain materials. And of course, the economic factor. Of course. Sometimes it's just cheaper to produce new plastic. It is than to recycle existing material. So it's it, a bit disheartening to realize that recycling, although crucial, it's part of the solution. It's not the silver bullet. Yeah. We need to really look at the life cycle of our products and find ways to reduce our reliance on single-use plastics to begin with. Yeah, absolutely. Which brings us to, shall we say, the elephant in the room. Or maybe that's the mountain of trash in the landfill. The mountain's trash. Yeah, and I gotta say, those images from the sources, the ones with bulldozers compacting these mountains of waste, plastic stretching as far as the eye can see. It's pretty impactful. Yeah, they're pretty sobering. That drone footage in one of the sources really drives home the scale of the problem. Just a visual reminder of the sheer amount of waste that we produce. It's a wake-up call for sure. And those landfills aren't just unsightly, they have serious environmental consequences too. Absolutely. Landfills release harmful gases, okay. including methane, a potent greenhouse gas. Oh yeah, methane is a big one. Yeah, it contributes significantly to climate change. Right, in fact, I think methane is something like 80 times more potent than carbon dioxide. It is. When it comes to trapping heat in the atmosphere. It's a bad one. And then there's also leachate. Leachate. Yeah, it's a toxic liquid that forms as rainwater filters through the waste. Uh oh. Picking up all sorts of nasty pollutants. Yuck. Yeah, it can contaminate groundwater and the nearby soil. So it's not just a visual blight. It's a real threat. It's a threat to the environment. Yeah, and what's particularly concerning is the situation in a lot of these developing countries. Yeah, one of the sources mentioned unregulated landfills, essentially open dumps. Basically. Posing serious health risks for nearby communities. <laughs> and they talked about respiratory illnesses being up to 60% higher in some areas because of constant exposure to burning waste and toxic fumes. Yeah, it's a terrible situation. It's a tough reality. The lack of proper waste management not only harms the environment, right. but also it really disproportionately impacts the health and well-being of these vulnerable populations. I don't know about you, but it's kind of, it's easy to get overwhelmed by all this. You know, yeah. sheer scale, the environmental impact, the health risks. It's a lot. It is a complex issue. It is, it is. But I'm glad that at least one of our sources offered some, I guess, a glimmer of hope. Okay. By highlighting organizations like Waste Aid, the World Bank, and the UNEP, they're doing some good work. Yeah, they're working to improve these waste management systems. Globally. Yeah. So what are they doing specifically? What's their approach? Well, they're kind of taking this multifaceted approach, what? providing funding for infrastructure improvements in developing countries, okay. helping to build more modern waste processing and recycling facilities. So it's not just about building more landfills, it's about finding smarter, more sustainable ways. Exactly, exactly. And also working on these education and training programs. Oh, that's great. Yeah, to promote better waste management practices, you know, at the community level. So it's really a top-down and bottom-up approach. It is, it is. And it's interesting that they're focusing on both the environmental and the human aspects. Right. They're really recognizing that link between uh, improper waste management yeah. and public health, especially in those vulnerable communities. It's really about creating a system that protects both people and the planet. Exactly, it's a holistic view. And I think there are also some promising innovations that are emerging as well. Oh, like what? One source talked about using anaerobic digestion oh. to break down that organic waste right. and actually generate biogas, a renewable energy source. Oh, wow. So turning trash into treasure. Exactly. And another source mentioned advancements in plastic eating enzymes. Really? Which could potentially revolutionize how we recycle. Wow, that's amazing. It sounds like there is a lot of work being done. Yeah. But you know, those images of the landfills, they still kind of stick with me. They are powerful images. Yeah, like that plastic bag tangled in a tree branch that makes trash piled high. It's a visual reminder. Yeah, it is. Of just how much we consume and how much ends up as waste. And it brings us back to that startling statistic. Only 9% of plastic 
ever produced. It's crazy. Has been recycled. I mean, it really highlights the limits of recycling alone as a solution. It's not enough. It's not enough. We can't just keep producing and consuming at this rate and, you know, expecting recycling to just magically solve the problem. Right. We need, a, I think, a fundamental shift. We need a change. In our thinking, in our habits. We need to move away from this throwaway culture yeah. and really embrace a more circular economy. Yes. Where products are designed to be reused, repaired, and recycled. I like that. A circular economy. So it's like it really all boils down to, to individual responsibility. It does. So for our listeners out there, what can we do? What can we do to make a difference? Well, I think for starters, we can be more conscious consumers. You know, okay. ask yourself, do I really need this single use plastic item? Can I choose a product with less packaging? Can I repair something instead of throwing it away? Right. I think those small changes that we make yeah. can have a really big impact collectively. Absolutely. Well, this deep dive has been really eye-opening. I'm not going to lie. We started by following the journey of our trash. Yeah. And we ended up confronting this, you know, global crisis. Yeah. But we also learned about all the people that are working tirelessly to find solutions, those organizations pushing for change. Absolutely. The innovations that offer a glimmer of hope. Yeah, the key takeaway for me, I think, is that waste management isn't just somebody else's problem. Right. It's an issue that affects all of us, both locally and globally. For sure. And the choices that we make every day, mm -hmm. from you know what we buy to how we dispose of things, they really have a ripple effect. Absolutely. So we've seen the hard work of those sorting through our trash, the challenges of recycling, and that stark reality of landfills. Yeah. But it's not just a story about garbage. No. It's about human impact. It's about environmental responsibility. And ultimately, it's about our shared future. It, and it's a story that's still being written. It is. So I think the question is, what role will you play? What choices will you make to help create that more sustainable future? That's a great question. Something for everyone to think about. Absolutely. Well, thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of trash. Maybe not the most glamorous topic. An important one. Certainly one that deserves our attention. Until next time, 